Hey Cowboys Nation, let's go for another round of news from America's team. Watch until the end so you don't miss any news and sign up to stay tuned for everything that comes out about the Cowboys. No Cowboys fined for Salvation Army Kettle celebrations on Thanksgiving Day. The NFL did not fine any Cowboys players for their touchdown celebrations in the Salvation Army Kettles on Thanksgiving Day against the Commanders. A late fourth quarter celebration included several players eating turkey legs that were stashed in the kettles. In a pre planned celebration, Dak Prescott coordinated the stashing of four turkey legs in each of the four kettles at AT&T Stadium. Prescott was among those celebrating with a turkey leg after Kevonte Turpin's 34-yard touchdown gave the Cowboys a 38-10 lead with 5.59 remaining. Officials did not penalize the Cowboys. The NFL has been inconsistent over the years in its decision whether to find celebrations in the kettles. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Former Cowboys running back Ezekiel Elliott was not fined for a leap into the kettle in 2016, but he was fined $13,369 for the same thing in 2018. Elliott and Prescott each were docked $13,261 for unsportsmanlike conduct last year. In a victory over the Colts last season, Elliott jumped in one of the kettles after a four-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter. Prescott then stood outside and cranked an imaginary handle as Elliott popped up and down in their Zeke in the Box celebration. Officials did not throw a flag. Four of the team's tight ends did a whack a mole celebration in the kettle a week earlier in 2022 and were not penalized but were fined. In 2017, former Seahawks cornerback Justin Coleman was penalized for jumping into one of the red kettles after a pick six but was not fined. NFL celebration rules prohibit players from using props, but the league should look the other way considering the positive publicity the Salivation Army's Red Kettle campaign receives for the celebrations. Despite the good feeling and momentum generated by the Cowboys in the games since they went on the bye in Week 7, one issue remains a concern. The poor production in the red zone. Dallas is the highest scoring team in the NFL, at 388 points and have averaged 39 points per game since they lost to the Eagles, a game that was followed by the break. But the difficulty that running back Tony Pollard has had in producing needed yards in short situations is still holding the offense back. It is with that in mind that Pollard, a free agent next offseason, is considered a strong possibility to land elsewhere next season. Even if Dallas did bring him back, or if it gave the job to back up Rico Dowdle, the Cowboys would be looking to add a hammer-type running back to improve their red zone efficiency, something hat was not an issue when Ezekiel Elliott was in his prime. And at Pro Football Focus, they see the Cowboys finding just the right fit in Bears backup Deonta Foreman, who has carried for 388 yards and a 4.1 yards per carry average this season. Cowboys need a bruising runner. Deonta Foreman had been a third-round pick out of Texas by the Texans in 2017, and tore his Achilles tendon in the offseason before his second year. When he came back, the Texans were unimpressed by his work ethic and his tendency to be late for meetings. They waived him and he has since bounced from Tennessee to Carolina and, now, to the Bears. He is averaging 4.1 yards per carry and has averaged 4.3 yards in his career wrote PFF. Foreman has been an effective bruising, downhill runner between the tackles over the past two seasons with the Carolina Panthers and now in Chicago. Foreman signed a one-year flyer with Chicago and is generally a healthy scratch when Khalil Herbert and Roschen Johnson are both healthy, which leads one to believe he won't be retained but also keeps him fresh for another opportunity in 2024. Foreman's 0.2 forced missed tackle per attempt rate as a top 25 mark at the position, and his 2.8 yards after contact per attempt is in the top 40. Foreman is current on a one-year, $2 million contract with the Bears. He is projected as a one-year, $3 million player in terms of market value by Spatrack next year. For the Cowboys, Tony Pollard is slated to make $10 million this year, playing on the franchise tag. Tony Pollard part of Red Zone struggles Tony Pollard will be heading into free agency this year, too, and is doing so on a downswing. His numbers have been better lately, 
but he lacks the power ability the Cowboys need in short situations. None of the backs on the roster have that level of burst between the tackles. The Cowboys are just 17th in the NFL in red zone touchdown percentage, getting into the end zone on just 53.7% of their attempts this year, down from 71.4% last year. That does not all fall on the shoulders of Pollard, of course, but there's no doubt that his running style does is not well suited to the grinned out play required in the end zone. That's where Foreman could help, either as a compliment to Tony Pollard, or as his replacement. Cowboys have Shaq Leonard, leaning, toward signing. The Dallas Cowboys' flirtation with Shaq Leonard during a brief free agency tour that also saw him visit the Philadelphia Eagles is a serious one. And, according to one plugged-in NFL guy, may be a winning one. I hear he's leaning toward the Cowboys, NFL analyst Baldinger said this week in an interview on 105.3 The Fan. I'm hearing he's favoring the Cowboys at this point. We can tell you the Cowboys' thinking here, on two fronts. One, they do not view Leonard as representative of some glaring need that will be cured. This isn't, to cite a player who some in Cowboys nation have actually mentioned, like trading for Charles Haley in 1992. A report that claims Dallas views Leonard as a difference maker is not really accurate at all. Leonard, after multiple back surgeries, has faded greatly from his days as a pro bowler. But at 28, he can be an effective run stopper here. The Cowboys can find that player, who in Leonard's case also happens to be a classy locker room leader, useful. That's the word one source is using with this. Useful. Two, proof of that view will be where Leonard's new contract lands. ESPN reported this week that there will be a bidding war between Dallas and Philly for Shaq's services. We can tell you ESPN did not get that information from here inside the star. Nor, frankly, do we believe they got it from anybody inside Eagles HQ, either. Oot in fact, while Dallas has lost Leighton Van Der Esch to injury for the season, the Eagles probably need him more, as thin as they are overall at linebacker. As Baldinger said, I know players on the Eagles that are heavily trying to recruit him. They need him. They've been losing linebackers all year. Leonard has friends and connections on both teams, including with Eagles coach Nick Sirianni, who used to work in Indianapolis. Said Sirianni, I was close with him when we were in Indy. It was good to be able to catch up with him and relive some memories. But also just talk a little bit about what this building is like. Leonard, recently cut by the Colts, is scheduled to make a decision maybe late Sunday, after the Eagles play the 49ers. Said Cowboys owner Jerry Jones, they said they're going to get back with us this weekend, probably after Philadelphia plays, is my guess. We had a great visit, and that's pretty much the way we left it. CowboysSI.com has been told the decision will come down to, attractiveness, with two factors to be gauged, where can he get snaps? And where, with 9-3 Dallas or with 10-1 Philly, is he more likely to win a Super Bowl ring? Said Baldinger, he's a little measured about this thing. He, wants to make the right decision.